Well, hello everyone. Thanks for watching another video on building your private practice. I'm Amanda Patterson. I'm the admin of my private practice tribe and I am a therapist in sunny South Florida. I have a group practice called Caring Therapists of Broward and I'm also a private practice consultant for therapists who are looking to create amazing business plans for a thriving private practice. Today I have with me Whitney Owens. She is the owner of Waters Edge Counseling and she's in Savannah, Georgia. And today we're going to be talking about the structure of her practice and how she's built up to having four W-2 employees. And so Whitney, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, it's good to be here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started and about your practice, and then we'll go into how you've gone over uh, to W-2 employees and why you made that decision. Sounds good. I think I kind of started like a lot of people, just kind of doing the thing on my own, seeing clients. Um, I have an office that's kind of midtown Savannah, so it's between downtown and the other side of town. Um, so I just saw clients three days a week. I never wanted to be working five days a week, seeing 40, 50 clients a week. I always wanted to be part-time just to kind of manage life balance. So I see uh, about six to eight clients a day was what I was doing on my own. And then the wait list started, right? And people started piling up and I'm thinking, wow, these people are needing treatment and I'm not really sure where to send them. And why am I not, you know, bringing on somebody to see these clients? So that's kind of how that idea started. And so I brought on a couple of people and then they've made some transitions and then I've brought on some more people. So it's going really well. So that's kind of how it started and what the plan was. So. How did you go from seeing just like a few clients a day to a wait list? I'm sure a lot of people are going to be interested in that. Yeah. I mean, the wait list was people calling and I didn't have a spot to fill them in. So I would start a little list. It was just right on my desk so I could see it real easily. And I'd say, you know, if I have a spot that opens up, I'll give you a call or I'll send you a text and see if you can make it in. So that's how that kind of started. And I would say it was when I was getting to like a list of three to five very consistently was when I thought I'm going to go ahead and add some money. And so what kind of marketing efforts were you doing to drive in those calls? Yeah, so I do a lot of kind of face-to-face -face interaction. So I'd go to a, like a pediatric office was a good place. I did see a lot of adolescents at that time. So there was usually a wait list for them because they can only come in after school hours. And so I did some of that. I recruited at churches, would talk to pastors or people in charge of like member care and youth pastors, so I would get some clients through that. I also went to a lot of the private schools in town, and the counselors would a lot of times send them, you know, those crisis intervention, hey, the students at school needs an evaluation before they can return, so I did get a lot of clients through that. Um, and I'm always really surprised how many you get through Google. So having really good SEO and a great website makes the world a difference. When you approach those private schools, how did you do that? Did you cold call? Did you cold email? Did you show up with cookies and, you know, cupcakes? What did you do? Yeah. yeah best situation is knowing someone who knows someone, in a, especially in a town like Savannah, a lot of people know a lot of people. So I would send an email a lot of times and say, oh, you know, so-and-so name drop told me to contact you and that you might be interested in what I have to offer or something like that. Now, if I didn't have a connection, I would just say, in an email usually, oh, I've heard great things about your school. I would love to come take a tour and hear about what you're doing with students and also tell you a little bit about how maybe I could help you. Instead of thinking of a, hey, send me people, you know, thinking it more like, what are your needs at your school and how can I help meet those needs? I think that's really great because I think a lot of therapists get really stuck on how to approach some of those types of places like schools or even churches or the pediatricians, right? So we hear like, go drop off cards. And so when you go and drop off cards, we've done it. And I know a lot of therapists do it. There's really not that reciprocal relationship of like, I'm going to send you referrals. You're going to send me referrals, or I want to see what your needs are. And here's what, how we can meet those needs. So I love what you said really about maybe setting up tours at some of the private schools. So for those of you who are looking to build up your practices, yeah. really going into those places. Yes, yes, definitely. And I, I do that the same schools, churches, anywhere I go. Hey, what is it when people come to your office and they have a mental health situation? What is it that they're talking about? 
And how do you know how to refer? Like when I go to the pediatric offices, I would take lunch and do some kind of educational event. Like when someone comes in your office and says they're depressed, what are the questions you should be asking? And what are the options out there for referring? Or um, if you're dealing with cutting, what's severe, what's superficial, you know, and all those types of questions that doctors have, just trying to address those. Yeah, so I think that's really great. We're, I think as therapists, we're really good at providing psychoeducation, right? That's a big part of what we do. And so if you think you're doing that with your clients, just bringing it to a wider scale and doing that with doctors um, and other uh, people in town. And so then you also talked about Google. Tell me a little bit about how you upped your Google game and got people from the ranking. Yeah, so that's kind of funny. I feel like people come in my path when they're supposed to come in my path. So the reason I changed, well, first I did my own website. It was okay. People said it was great. I thought it was terrible, right? Um, but I was trying then to- they've be, done that. <laughs> yeah, 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 trying to bootstrap, right? And so then um, one of my nannies that I hired for my girls, she was like, oh, my husband he has his master's degree. He's having a hard time finding work and he does website design. And I said, what? Like, would he be willing to revamp my website? And so he revamped it and did a fabulous job. And as soon as he did that, I got a lot more hits, a lot more calls. And then just over the past few months, I hired someone specifically to work through uh, SEO indexing and doing the back stuff, you know, all those terms I don't really understand. She understands those and she does all that for me. And that has made a huge difference. And I would say we get probably 50 to 60% of our calls are people who just organically searched for a counselor in Savannah. Wow. And that's, mm -hmm. it's not a small area either. And so that's really impressive. Yeah. How did you find that person to do your SEO? I'm sure people are going to be interested in hearing that name and that information. Uh, well, yeah. So it's the, a friend of mine. And so her wow. daughter yeah. and my daughter went to preschool together and oh. <laughs> he told me, oh, this is what I do for work. And she works for another advertising agency. And I was like, would you be willing to do a few hours on the side? And she loved the idea of helping me because she has a real vision for counseling as well. Some of her daughter and her and her husband had gone to counseling. So she's been helping me with that. So I really... I pay her probably for four or five hours a week. And she does that. She also does, does the social media. So like Facebook and post blogs and things. What are, what do you have her do for social media? Well, right now it's just Facebook. Um, so she monitors that, but we're hoping to branch out. So that's kind of what we're in the process of doing right now. So it really seems like you've got a lot of the basis covers in, in terms of mar in terms of marketing. How do you manage those calls that are coming in? I have an assistant. Okay, tell us all about that. <laughs> yes, yes. So at the beginning, I was doing it myself, and I found it very stressful. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know that feeling that you're meeting with a client, you get them out the door, you see you've got two calls, two new clients want to come in, but when am I ever going to get those calls made? And you never know how long those calls are going to take, right? You put five, 10 minutes aside for a call, it ends up being 15 minutes long. So I found it very stressful to kind of juggle all that. So I hired someone to start taking those calls for me and that has made a huge difference, especially when you're growing a practice. If it's just, um, if it's you taking the calls, people wanna see you. So when someone else is taking the calls, they're more likely to fill up your other therapists and they help set the boundary for me because we get these empathetic calls and we're like, oh, I really wanna help this person, right? And so I'm gonna fit them in when I'm really like, no, I really shouldn't fit this person in. So when the assistant answers that call, I don't have to worry about me feeling guilty for not seeing someone. So that's, that was another part of hiring her. That was really great. But I brought her on over the summer. She is working from home. She's able to take those calls and schedule appointments, um, use her own computer. And a lot of people do that with a VA, which is great, but I kind of have the best of everything. Like she's a VA, so she works from home, but she's local. So she understands the area. She can give people directions. She knows a lot of the people, referral sources that are calling. Um, so she can make those connections. And then she can come in for staff meeting. Um, we have that once a month that she comes to. We do it every other week, but she comes once a month so that the therapists actually know her, see her. And then she, I feel like has a better grasp on the kind of services we do, what the therapists are really like when she's advertising us over the phone. So it's been really a great setup and she just logs her hours based on the calls that she's taking. Um, I have her set up as a W2 and then at the end of the month, she just sends me her hours. Can you tell me why you chose to do W2 for your VA and your therapist that you have at your practice? 
Yeah. yeah. So with the assistant, that was because I told my attorney about it and he said, she sounds like a W-2, not a contractor. <laughs> He said basically because she was only working for me and she wasn't working for anyone else, that's more like an employee. And I was really nervous to make that jump because my therapists at the time are contractors and there's just so much that, well, it felt like so much went into hiring an employee and the taxes and all that. But once I actually made that jump, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And I really like it because I have a lot more say over what she's doing and looking back over things um, as opposed to kind of her doing her own thing. And I love that she only works for me and not for multiple practices because I'm sure it's hard for VAs to juggle multiple practices, multiple calls and understanding the setup. So now she's just kind of totally focused and whenever I need her, I can get in touch with her. So I really like that. Um, so once I had already made that jump, it felt a little easier hiring a W-2 counselor. Um, when I was having contractors, I mean, they were doing great work, but it still kind of felt separate. And I really wanted more of a team approach in what we were doing, being able to encourage them to come to staff meetings and being able to offer benefits to counselors. So a lot of counselors work at practices. They don't get anything other than just seeing the clients as far as compensation. So I went on ahead and changed to W-2 when I hired in November. And then I hired two more counselors in January. So I've got three counselors as employees, and then I've got the assistant. And they all seem very happy. We're doing staff meeting together. We're having a lot more camaraderie among each other. And I just have an accountant that takes care of all the other stuff. And it's been going really well. And so with your W-2 employees, do you pay them hourly or do you pay them a percentage, like for your therapist? Mm -hmm. Good question. So I pay them based on, um, I kind of have a tiered system. And so if they're licensed or not, that will make a difference in what they get paid. Obviously the licensed people get a better base pay than the unlicensed person. And so they make a certain amount per client. And then if they see more than a certain number of clients in a two week, one month period, depending on when they get paid, they make more per client. So it gives them kind of incentive to move up to the next tier to make more per client. And then I also have an administrative rate. So when they come to staff meeting or if they meet one-on-one -on -one with me, something like that, I do pay them for that time. And that's a lower rate. And then their um, PTO is also the administrative rate. And do they, do you pay for things like marketing? Like if they, let's say they go with you to meet with a high school or a pediatrician's office. Yes, I cover everything. Anything that they're doing, I'm covering. The only thing that I don't pay for is their phone. And that's how they take the calls. There's an app on their phone um, and their computers because I really can't monitor all that. That makes sense. Yeah. So then it's, you really like have built up this model where it's a private practice, but they're still employees. So they get a lot of the benefits of that. Now, does your practice take insurance or is it private pay or a mix of both? It is all private pay. Yeah. How yeah. have you built that up? Yeah. 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 So that's actually interesting too. So when I moved to Georgia, I had most recently been in Colorado, had my license out there and then I got here and Georgia didn't want to give me my license. Mm. So then I had to go backwards and do a whole nother year of supervision. And so then I was in this situation where insurance was not an option. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do cash pay. I'm going to make this work. And within that year, I got my practice to where I wanted working three days a week, seeing, you know, about 20 clients a week. And then I was like, why would I go use insurance when this is working and there are plenty of other therapists in town that do accept insurance. So it's not like clients can't find the services they need. Um, yeah. So then I just kept going in that direction because it was growing and doing good. Yeah. So I think that's a good uh, distinction for people is like whether you start off private pay, if you are for, if you have a license issue or if you're starting as a registered intern, I don't know if that's a term in other places, but here it's a registered intern, you know, starting off private pay can really help to build up that private pay in the long run. And when you have other types of uh, contractors or employees because people are used to sending over those types of clients to you. And so I think that makes a lot of sense. I've also seen it where people take insurance and then they build up and they're like slowly tear off of insurances. So I think it's like really flexible, but I, I'm sure that's like a definitely a plus for a lot of the employees that you have because then they don't have to deal with some of the other things that happen with insurance or delays and payments and those kinds of things. Definitely, definitely. And it decreases my overhead significantly. I don't have to have electronic medical records and companies that are doing billing and all those types of things that I would need to have. Mm.
Yeah, and then you don't have to pay a biller. So then that definitely, yeah, <laughs> saves some money. And so that's awesome. Where do you see you t you're, you're taking your practice? Are you looking to expand? Are there any therapists uh, watching in Savannah that maybe are looking to join a practice? Where are you going? Yeah, so I think I would like to add one or two more. Um, right now, I love my building. So that's a big part of not wanting to grow too much because I don't want to leave my building. <laughs> And it's beautiful and it's, I um, understand um, that. Yeah, I'm on the top floor of an old historic home in Savannah and the, the oak trees and the moss. It's just like picturesque. So I really don't want to leave. Um, so whatever it takes to maximize the space that I have. So I could maybe add one more right now. Um, but How many I don't, offices do you have? I have two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, most of the days are full. I've got like two to three more days, but other than that, we're maximizing it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a, also a big consideration for a lot of therapists is the space they're in and, and bringing on more people. Sometimes that means that you have to get creative with your space or you do have to think about moving. And when you're in an office space that you love, that can be a little bit difficult. We're, uh, we're getting ready to expand into a larger space. I'm going yeah. from three offices to six offices. Yeah, and it's, it just, it came to the point where I, ha you know, we maximize our space or, um, I, I was limited in bringing on new people and things like that. And so that can be a really tough decision for a, for a private practice owner to make, uh, but it can be an exciting decision too. And so, you know, when you, whenever you're ready to make that decision, I, you know, I support you. Yeah. Yeah. What would you like people th uh, to know that are just maybe starting out or trying to really build up their practices? Yes, I would say take risks. I think it's really easy to be scared and let fear keep you from moving forward. But I feel like as I look back, all the times that I was really scared to do something, once I took that jump, I looked back and was like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> you know, and I saw success and good things come. So don't be scared to go after big ideas, to go after your dreams in private practice, try different things and see what happens. Because I think good things can come. That's awesome. That's a great message to leave everybody with. Taking risks. Those of us who are risk averse might be going, oh no, I don't know if I can take risks, but I think it, it is right. Like when you're a private practice owner, you really are a business owner, right? You're not just a private, you're not just a therapist anymore. You're a business owner. And part of being a business owner is taking risks. So Whitney, thank you so much for sharing your journey of being in private practice. It's truly an inspirational one. And I would encourage anybody that's looking to connect with a successful private practice owner, I'll put all of your contact information in the show notes. What's the easiest way for people to get in touch with you though? Yeah, email. It's Whitney at watersedgecounseling.com. And so I just wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsor. So for those of you who are still using paper and pencil, and if you're looking to add an electronic health record, I would recommend Therapy Notes for that, that you will be able to do your notes through there, send client reminders, and just keep everything very organized. So if anybody watching is looking to either switch their electronic health record or add an electronic health record, check out Therapy Notes. They're at therapynotes.com. And if you want to get two months free, just type in the promo code Amanda. And so thank you for watching. We'll have some more videos on private practice building. And Whitney, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Amanda.